glory, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. You are welcome. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. See the stove. You're welcome. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. Good to see you. Good to see you. Apostle Sam, good to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory to Jesus. I welcome you in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. My brother, father, you're welcome. Evangelist, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hey, Sino Stone, thank you for, for the update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're all welcome in the name of Jesus. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. Sino Stone, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. What a day to be alive. We give praise and thanks to our God who has been helping us all this while. And Ndobi, you're welcome. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. Good to see you. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We've been looking at overcoming fear in business. This is the third part in the series. The first, we... We looked at it and we tried to define our terms and we are, you know, defining fear, defining overcoming, defining business for us to have proper understanding of what we are talking about. Then we went further to look at how the spirit of fear works in business and why we must overcome fear. That was last week. You know, so by way of recap, you know, before we look at what we have for today, um, it is important for us to appreciate what fear is and understand what overcoming is and what business is all about. It will help us in no small measure to appreciate the teaching of today. We began, you know, if you remember, or if you watch the video that we said that overcoming means to succeed in dealing with a problem or difficulty to succeed in dealing with a problem or difficulty to prevail over to control to conquer or gain mastery over something that's that is what we mean by overcoming to overcome and we said that fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. And according to the Cambridge Dictionary, fear is an unpleasant emotion or thought that you have, you have when you are frightened or worried by something dangerous, painful, or bad that is happening or might happen. You know, sometimes we borrow the fears of tomorrow. Sometimes our fears are as a result of what we suffered in the past or what we think that is happening presently. So 
if we are not able to manage these things, we'll find out that it may affect our emotions. And the devil will capitalize on that to inject in us the spirit of fear. And we define business to be anything that engages you. It could be your company, it could be your enterprise, it could be your firm, it could be your house as a housewife. It could be your interest, it could be your career. It could be anything that engages your time in order to create a custom. And when your business concern becomes an, becomes an anxious concern to you, then you are in fear. That is why it is important for us to look at how we can overcome fear so that we can blossom in business and succeed because that is the will of God concerning us. Praise God. And I said something during um, our last teaching that most times we think that fear is more of an emotional concern or a problem. But I said that fear is not only an emotional problem, but a spiritual problem. In fact, it is much more a spiritual problem than, an, than a psychological problem. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, 7, that for God has not given us the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of love, the spirit of boldness, of power, and of a sound mind. That is what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. See, the spirit that we have is the spirit of boldness, the spirit of power, the spirit of love. So, so fear is a spirit. And until you realize that fear is a spirit, you find out that you may not be able to deal with it. It's not something that you will handle in any how, or you handle it by, by, you know, by, by the arm of the flesh, or by your own thinking, or by your own strategy. But fear is something that we must handle spiritually for us to live us permanently. Praise God. So, we have defined our terms, we have defined what fear is, we have defined what overcoming is, we have defined what business is. So it becomes important for us to, it becomes, <laughs> thank you pastor, God bless you, good to see you. So it becomes important for us to overcome every form of fear for us to prosper in our business because it is the will of God that you prosper in your business. It is the will of God you prosper in whatever you do in life. Whatever assignment that God has given to you and that you are pursuing, God wants you to succeed in that business. And one way that we can succeed is by eliminating fear in our lives. And because fear is a robber of destiny. Fear has destroyed so many destinies. Fear has made a lot of people who are supposed to be billionaires, who are supposed to be trailblazers, to be, to be on the ground. Some of them have died. Some people have died out of fear. But fe until you deal with fear spiritually, it will continue to torment you. So we have looked at how the spirit of fear works in business. Pastor Chika, you're welcome. Good to see you. We, in one of our teachings, we say, how does the spirit of fear work? We try to identify how the spirit of fear works. Number one, we said it can work through disobedience. When you're disobedient to spiritual laws, the spirit of fear will definitely overwhelm you because you're disobedient to spiritual laws. When you're disobedient to God, the spirit of fear will capture you. When Adam disobeyed God, the Bible says he became fearful that he went into hiding. That is what the spirit of fear can do when you are disobedient. Number two, when seeds of hate are sown, you will find out that love vanishes because this, the seeds of hate has been sown. So it becomes important that we, we, we walk in love because sowing the seeds of hate will drive away you know, love and will over, the spirit of fear will over, overwhelm us. So it becomes important that we do not sow the seeds of hate 
because that is one way the spirit of fear can come in. Number three, we said unfounded and prejudiced assumptions. Sometimes we assume, and some of these assumptions are unfounded, and in the process, we become fearful. In the process, we become afraid. We are frightened because of our bias, because of false assumptions. Number four, how the spirit of fear works is exaggerated opinion or rating of competition. Sometimes we overrate competition. We overrate competition. And that could make you to, be, to become fearful because you think that competition is doing better than you. You think that competition you know, has some leverage over you or some advantages over you. And you over-exaggerate the power or the capabilities of competition. We saw that in Numbers 13, 31 to 33, when you know, Moses sent out the, the 12 spies, the Bible says that two, two of them came back and brought, brought back an evil report. You know, two, you know, 10 of them brought the evil report. It was only two, George, uh, Joshua and Caleb, that brought good report. You find out that the two, the, the, the ten, sorry, that brought the evil report overrated the, uh, the giants in the land. So sometimes we overrate competition and in turn we become fearful of what they, they can't even do. <laughs> we are fearful that they will do better than us. We are fearful that they will run out of business. No, it is a, a, a ploy of the devil to inject fear in you so that you cannot perform to your maximum. And with, in the name of Jesus, we decree that that will not be a portion in the precious name of Jesus. Number five, we say that another way the devil can inject fear in, in you is through low self-esteem or absence of self-efficacy. When there, there's low self-esteem, you find out that you'll be fearful. In Judges chapter 6, we saw Gideon. The Bible you know, called him a mighty man of war, a valiant man. But because he was fearful, he was hiding. He was hiding from the opposition because he had very low self-esteem. So we need to watch it. Low self-esteem is one way the, the spirit of fear can work in business. Number six is on the, on the unknown and uncertain future. When your future is unknown, when your future is uncertain, you find out that you'll be fearful. When you don't surrender your future to the hand of God, you find out that you are fearful. You are not sure what tomorrow will bring. You are carried away by the things you see, by the things you hear in news, by the things you know that you know that are happening around, around the globe. You know, because your, you, your future is unknown and your future is uncertain. But having a future secured in Christ guarantees you a glorious future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So number seven, our way by which the spirit of fear works is through uncountered un, un words. When words are spoken, words are spoken to you, Fearful words, and you don't counter them. The tendency is that you become fearful. We saw that in First Samuel chapter 17, that Goliath was speaking words of fear to the children of Israel, and they were afraid, they were hiding, and no one could counter those words until David came into the scene. So who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Take heed to what you hear. That's what the Bible says. Because uncountered words can inject fear in you. You need to brace up and counter every negative word that the enemy speaks to you. And speak the words of faith. Counter them with the words of faith. And you'll find yourself constant to your victory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, and that's for on how the spirit of fear works. Then we, we now ask ourselves, why must we overcome fear? Why must we overcome fear? And we said that fear paralyzes and kills creativity. 
we must overcome fear because fear paralyzes and kills creativity. Number two, we said that fear can be mysterious. It is an enemy of adventure. It is an enemy of entrepreneurship. You cannot embark on entrepreneurship in fear. In fact, even if some people will tell you, do it afraid. Why are you afraid? Just plunge it. You know, fear can has a way of making you taking away the energy in you. It saps you the energy in you. It saps the energy in you. It paralyzes you. It's an enemy of adventure. That's why we have too many people who are one entrepreneurs. They want to every day, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to go there, I want to do that. And they are not able to do that because they are living in fear. They are looking at the weather. They are looking at the weather. And because they are looking at the weather, they are not able to sow. So it becomes important that we overcome fear because it will it is an enemy of adventure. Fear paralyzes and kills creativity. Fear is mysterious. It's a torment. And it can torment your destiny. It can torment you if you allow fear to overwhelm you. That will not be your portion in the precious name of Jesus. And I also said that no great destiny has been built on the fear of what might go wrong but on the hope of what may go right. You want to build a great destiny. You don't fear about what may go wrong, but hope that things will go right. That is the only way for you to excel. But if you start looking at the things which may go wrong, you find out that you, may, you won't adventure. You won't venture at all. You won't venture at all because you are afraid. And fear is the silent destroyer of dreams, according to... Gary Hoggy. He said that fear is the silent destroyer of dreams. Also, Gary Hoggy said, also said that nothing undermines the power and blessing of a gifted, talented, equipped, and promising leader like fear. It is the, it is the everyday insecurities that lead us to abandon our dreams without even putting up a fight. Sometimes we feel inadequate. Sometimes the fear of failure overwhelms us that we are not able to venture. So you must overcome fear if you must succeed in life. If you must embark on that entrepreneurial pro project, you must overcome fear. The tendency is that fear, some, if someone tells you that there will be no cause for you to fear, the person might be telling you, might not be telling you the truth. But the truth of the matter is that you can overcome any form of fear that comes your way. You can overcome it. And today, by the grace of God, we shall be looking at how to overcome fear. It's important we look at how we can overcome fear. Praise the Lord. So, today, we are looking at how to overcome fear. It's important that we look at how we can overcome fear. Johnny, you're welcome. Good to see you. How to overcome fear. Number one on how to overcome fear is that you must be born of God. If you must overcome fear, then you must be born of God. In 1 John chapter 5, and verse 4, the Bible says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. For whatsoever that is born of God overcometh fear. Do you want to overcome fear? Then you must be born of God. When you are born of God, you overcome any form of fear. Because you are born, by, uh, you are born of love. God is love. And when the spirit of love over, overwhelms you, the spirit of fear flees. The spirit of fear cannot hold you. He that is one of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So, we must be born of God for us to overcome fear. The Bible is very clear on that. You must be born of God. You must be born of God. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. 
and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And Jesus came to destroy he that has the power of death, so that we will no longer be afraid of what tomorrow holds. We will no longer be afraid. We will no longer be afraid because Jesus has disarmed the enemy. In Hebrews chapter two, let me read Hebrews chapter two to us empower our understanding. Hebrews chapter two, fourteen and fifteen. The Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death we might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them, hear this, and deliver them, who through fear of death we are all their lifetime subject to bondage. Did you hear that? So, to deliver them, who through fear of death we are all their time subject to bondage. So Jesus came to deliver us from the fear of death, to de deliver us from every, any form of fear. So that is why it is important for you to be born of God. It's for you to become, when you are born again, the spirit of fear leaves you. You have the spirit of God and the, the Holy Spirit now lives in you if you are born again. And that's why the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but has given us the spirit of boldness of love and of a sound mind praise god so number one way by which we can we can overcome fear is by being born of god praise god being born of god number two how to overcome fear is through understanding of your makeup as a believer through understanding of your makeup as a believer most times mo some believers don't even understand their makeup as children of God. You don't know what you are made of, and you are intimidated by the enemy. Without understanding of your makeup, you won't achieve the makeover. Without understanding of your makeup, you won't achieve the makeover. You know, those in the beauty industry will, will tell you that for you to be made of, for you for that to be a make a makeover. The texture of your face, you know, must be known, you know, by the by the beautician. You know, you have to uh, look at the texture of your face, or you know, look at the, you know different things to uh, to determine you know the colors that will suit your your face. Praise God! They determine the powder, the type of powder that that will be used, you know, to make you over. So until you understand your makeup you won't achieve the makeover. Very important. You need to understand who you are in Christ. Understand who you are in Christ. The Bible says, from where we read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, that whatsoever that is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. In 1 John 4, 4, 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God. I love that. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you know that you are born of God, when you know that you have overcome every, every, every force of darkness, when you know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, you are not afraid. You are not afraid at all. Rather, you are carrying your head high, you are walking boldly, you are very courageous because you know that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So you need to understand your makeup as a believer. You need to understand who you are, your identity. The Bible says, ye are of God. First John 4.4, 4. ye are of God, little children. I have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What a joy. What a joy to know that we are of God. And that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So I cannot have God and still be afraid of the devil. I cannot have God and still be afraid of what will happen tomorrow. So because I have God, I can do more than my abilities can carry. Because the Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do, exceed it, abundantly, above all that we ask, or think according to his power that is at work in us. 
Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. So, the power of God that is at work in us has the capacity to do much more than our physical abilities can do. The power in us is the power of God, so we can overcome every force of darkness. The Bible says, ye are of God, and we have overcome all of them. All. First John 4, 4. For he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. What a joy. What a joy to know that he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So, when you understand your makeup as a believer, you know, you are, no devil harasses you. Fear will flee from you. Praise God. You know, just like the lion, the lion understands he, he, that he is the king of the jungle. And that's why he, the Bible says he turns not away from any. He turns not away from any. The, the lion is, is bold. And he, you know, he's the king of uh, of the jungle, and he turns not away from any, because he, the lion understands, you know, the inherent power in it in, in, in her, and that's why, you know, they they stand to face the prey. Usually, the, the lion is regarded as the predator because of the power that the the lion exudes. So. You need to understand your makeup. You need to understand who you are as a believer. And when you understand that, you will overcome fear. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what a joy to know that we are of God. Number three on how to overcome fear is we must build our faith. Build your faith. You must build your faith. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, where we read, that whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Even our faith. So that is our faith. It takes faith to overcome. That's what it means. He said, for whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. That is our faith. So our faith is the victory. Our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So for you to overcome the world, you need to build your faith. For you to overcome fear, you need to build consistently, build your faith. So we need to build our faith. And no wonder... You know, in Jude, Jude has only one chapter, Jude verse 20. The Bible says, build, you know, talking about say building your most holy faith. Let's read that place. Say, but but ye, beloved, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. So, you, we must build our faith. And one way to build our faith is by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues. You know, build up your faith in, by praying the Holy Spirit. Build up your faith by studying the Word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Build up your faith by associating with men of faith. So that there can be an impartation of faith, you know. Saint Paul, you know, speaking to the, the, the writing to the church in Rome, in Romans chapter one and verse eleven, he says, "I long to come to you that I may impart some spiritual gifts to the end that you will be established, to the end that you will be edified, to the end that you will be built." That is the spirit of faith. So when the spirit of faith is imparted, you find out that you keep growing, you keep going and keep building on it. So. You must build your faith if you must overcome the, the, the devil, if you must overcome fear in business, in career, in your academics, in whatever you are doing at home, you must build your faith on the word of God. You must build your faith. Believe God, believe his words, and begin to walk in line with his word. Begin to exude and behave like the son of God that you are. Praise God. So, build up your faith. And as you build up your faith, you overcome. Because your victory is your faith. Praise the Lord. Say, 
In 1 John 5, 4, I love that scripture. It says, whatsoever that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That is our faith. So the victory is our faith. So the victory is our faith. And we need to engage our faith, keep building our faith on the word of God. And, and as we do so, we'll find out that we will keep overcoming all forms of fear in business, in our career, in our marriages, in our relationships, in what, in which, in any department of life, you will overcome because you are building your faith. As your faith grows, you find out that every form of fear diminishes. Praise God. As your faith grows, every form of fear will diminish. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's number three. Number four on how to overcome fear is be a bold talker. Hallelujah. I like this. Be a bold talker. You must learn how to talk. You must be trained on how to talk. You must be a bold talker. You must talk to the challenge boldly. Whatever is challenging you, be bold to talk to it. Never shy away from speaking boldly. Never shy away from it. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. The devil can only have a, an influence over you and inject you with the spirit of fear if you are not a bold talker. So you must be a bold talker. Something interesting happened in 1 Samuel chapter 17 from 42 to 47. The Philistines, Philistines came to attack the children of Israel and their captain, Goliath, threatened Israel for 40 days and 40 nights. And every day he, 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 he would come out, he would talk and talk, and the children of Israel were afraid. No one could challenge him until one day, one young lad came into the scene. His name is David. David came into the scene and challenged this giant, supposed giant. The David challenged this supposed giant. You know the interesting thing that Goliath spoke three, 33 words of fear. He thought that he could intimidate David with 33 words. But David spoke 130 words of faith. David spoke 130 words of faith. So we must learn to challenge our opposition boldly. Challenge whatever that is standing on your way. You must challenge it and never shy away from it. You must learn to talk and to talk boldly. Something interesting also happened in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 from verse 16. To tell you that the enemy will always want to threaten you, will always want to speak words of fear to intimidate you, but never give in. In verse, Acts 4, 16, the Bible says, Say, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. We cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us strictly threaten them. Look at the, the, the strategy of the enemy. So let us strictly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. The enemy will always want to threaten you with words of fear. With words of fear. And, and they went further. And they went further and in verse 21, the Bible says, So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. You know, so you find that the enemy will always want to threaten you. They always want to speak words of fear to shut you up. But I love what, you know, Peter and John said to them, you know, in verse 20. He said, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Hallelujah. He said, but we cannot, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So nobody should guard your tongue. Nobody should gag your, you know, should close your mouth. 
You must speak boldly. Speak boldly in the Lord. Speak the word of God, the word of faith, boldly. Declare the word of God concerning you. And no devil will be able to intimidate you. The Bible says that Peter and John said, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Praise God. Praise God. And they went back to their own company and they kept speaking the word of God boldly. And also, they spoke the word of God boldly to the Lord. You know, they, they went back and they started praying and they prayed from Psalm number 2. If you see that from verse 23 of Acts chapter 4. So I'm being let go. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth, and the sea and all that in them is. For by who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? Praise God. You know, they went back and located the right scripture and they began to speak to the Lord boldly, you know, from Psalm number two. Praise God. So when you are threatened, when you are in fear, what do you need to do? Speak boldly to the Lord. Go, go, and go, go to the word and, you know, locate the, the right word. The Bible says, how possible are right words? Speak the right words to the Lord. Speak boldly and in faith and challenge that particular challenge will surely bow. Praise God. That challenge will surely bow. You must be a bold talker. Don't allow any devil to intimidate you. <laughs> Praise God. Never allow any devil to intimidate you. I had a testimony recently, you know, from Pastor David, where he was genial. You know, he shared a very interesting testimony, you know, back in London, where he was pastoring before he came to Kenan land. He said that this a courtist who kept terrorizing everyone. Everyone he told that was going to die, died. You know, and everybody was afraid of him. One day, he came and told one young lad that it was his turn to die. And the young man looked at him and laughed and said, I give you seven days. Seven days, if you don't repent, first, your first son will die. And then, he, he, will, he, he will follow. And it just happened as, you know, the, 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 the young, young lad said it. Because the young man knew his position in Christ. And he was a bold talker. He never allowed this occultist to intimidate him. Imagine if the guy had kept quiet. You know, the, the guy would have died. But he was a bold talker. He was bold to declare the will of God concerning his life. He was bold to challenge the, the, the enemy. And he took the battle back to him and injected fear in the, in the occultist. And the occultist had to pay for it. You know, it's not everybody that you, you know, the devil can intimidate. When you know your position in Christ, you speak boldly to every challenge. You speak boldly to every challenge. And I want you to begin to speak boldly to every challenge. You know, don't allow the enemy to intimidate you. If your business is not going the way you expect it to go, speak to that business. Speak to, to that business. And that business will come back to life. It has happened to you know to me. There was a time you know our, our, our firm wasn't doing well as I expected, and I spoke the word of God to the firm. I came one day, poured oil, and spoke boldly, you know, to, you know, to, to the firm, and doors opened. That is the way you what you must do. If that business is slow. Speak to that business. If anyone, the devil is challenging you, trying to intimidate you, speak boldly to the devil. I challenge the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible says resist the devil and he will surely flee from you. So the devil you don't resist will insist. The devil you don't resist will insist. And that is how fear comes because you have failed to resist him. You have failed to talk boldly. You must be a bold talker. For you to overcome fear. Praise the Lord. And I see you overcoming all forms of fear in your life in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. So, that's number four. We have looked at four. We say, number one, be born of God. Number two, understand your makeup as a believer. Number three, build your faith. And number four, we said, you must be a bold talker. Number five, you must embrace the spirit of love. 
Praise God. You must embrace the spirit of love. If you must overcome the spirit of fear, you must embrace the spirit of love. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit has shed his love abroad in our hearts. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. The love of, of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we must embrace the spirit of love. We must embrace the spirit of love. You must embrace the spirit of love. Praise the Lord. Pray, the Bible says, embrace in, in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. I want us to look at that Bible passage. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. Very important. Embrace the spirit of love. 1 John 4 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So there is no fear in love when you are when you when you operate in with and in the spirit of love, you find out that fear does doesn't have any hold of you at all. The Bible says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment. Fear has torment. Fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So you need the Holy Spirit of God, the spirit of love, to dwell in you for you to overcome the spirit of fear. In First John, in, no, sorry, First Timothy chapter one and verse seven, the Bible says, "For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but He has given us the spirit of boldness, the spirit of love, and of a sound mind." So God has given us the spirit of love. You must embrace the spirit of love for you to overcome the spirit of fear. Praise God. Very important. And in First Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse eight. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8, the Bible says there that love fails, faileth not. Love does not fail. Say charity never fails. In some version it says love never fails. If you want to succeed in life, you must embrace the spirit of love. It does not fail. Charity never fails. Love never fails. That is the greatest asset you have as a believer. For you to um, walk and embrace the spirit of love. If you embrace the spirit of love, I can assure you that the spirit of fear will not have will not have any hold of you, because you know perfect love casts out all fears, and you can only have the spirit of, the, that spirit of love when you are walking with the Holy Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. So, embrace the spirit of love and begin to walk in freedom. And every form of fear will leave you. In business, operate with love. Show love to your customers. Show love to your uh, employees. Show love to every stakeholder. Show love to the society, to the uh, uh, community where you operate your business. You must show love. Show love. If you're not showing love to the community, you'll be in fear because the youth of the place can be, become restive and you know, deal with you. You know, that is why, you know, some of the higher companies in the south, in Nigeria, are having issues because they are degrading the land, polluting the environment, and they are not doing much for, for, for the people. But if you show love to yeah, the all stakeholders, and also, and primarily show love to God, because if you show love to God, you will also extend that love to your fellow men. You will show love to society. Praise the Lord. So, Love is very key for you to overcome the spirit of fear. You must embrace the spirit of love. You must embrace the spirit of love for you to overcome the spirit of fear. Praise the Lord. So, in, in your, if you must overcome fear in business, please operate in love. And operate and allow the spirit of God to overwhelm you and things will begin to work in the way that you never imagined. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Number seven on how to overcome fear is avoid fearful company and embrace faith talkers. You must avoid fearful company. You know, sometimes we we'll find ourselves in the company of those, you know, that talk fear. They're always talking about fear. Always complaining, talking about the evils happening in society. Some people will spend their whole time watching CNN, watching 
you know, television and the hearing of all of calamities happening, and they become fearful. They are listening, listening to news about people that have failed in businesses, people that have failed in life, and they are afraid. You must embrace faith talkers. Be in the company of those that talk faith, that talk about progress. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verse 33, said, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Be not deceived. Evil communication will instill fear in you. If you have a com if you have the company of communicating with people that will instill fear in you, the, the tendency is for you to walk in fear. So you must distill your company. You must distill and, and be sensitive to the people you associate with. Associate with faith talkers. Even in the church, even as a believer, I don't listen to every preacher. There are preachers that only talk about evil. They're always talking about evil coming upon people. No, I listen to only faith me me preachers, grace me messengers, people talking about the grace of God, men of God talking about the faith of faith in God, people talking about you know the blessings of God, people talking about obedience. You know how I what I need to do in order to ensure that I walk in, in faith. That is what life is all about. You must avoid fearful company and embrace the spirit of faith and begin to talk faith also with them. Praise the Lord. Also in Acts chapter 4 where we read, remember, I talked about Peter and John that when they were threatened, they said, we cannot but speak the things we have heard and the things which you have seen. And what did they do? The Bible says they went to their own company. They went to their own company. They went to the right company where they praise God, pray to God, and they invoke scriptures. They invoke Psalm 2 to pray with. And that marked the end of that, of that fear that the enemy wanted to steal in them. Because they identified the right company and they went to the right company. Praise God. Oh, what a joy. The Bible says in First Samuel, no, sorry, in Psalms 1, the book of Psalms and verse 1, the Bible says there that blessed is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And it's in his law that he meditates day and night. So you need to identify your company. Say, bless is that man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Bless is that man that walks not in the counsel of the fearful. Bless is that man. Bless is that man. So you must identify faith talkers and relate to them. You know, I don't hang around people that talk negatively. I don't hang around people that, you know, that are not positive in life. People that don't see any good about tomorrow. People that don't see any good in, in, in any human being. I relate with only those who talk faith, who talk the word of God. People who, who are progressive in nature. You know, I don't, I, I don't hang around people who talk about the past. Tomorrow is gone. You know, I'm looking at people who are talking about what God is doing today and what God will do tomorrow. You know, looking at what God has promised and what, what God is doing. So, avoid fearful company and embrace faith talkers. And if you do so, you'll find out that you'll build up your faith in the Lord. And every form of fear will, will flee from you. Praise God. So the spirit of boldness was imparted on Peter and John by association. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 13, and I want us to read Acts chapter 4 and verse 13 and see what the right company can do as regards to the, having faith and, and dealing with uh, overcoming fear. Praise God. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Very interesting Bible passage. The Bible says, And now when they saw the boldness of Peter, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge. Hear that? They took knowledge that they have been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Association. So when they saw the boldness, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they were not fearful men. 
but they were but they took notice that they were ignorant but they were learned that's what it means they were uneducated but looking at their boldness you know where could they have derived their strength where could they have derived this boldness you know what kind of spirit are they made of the bible says they took knowledge that they have been with Jesus. So you cannot be with Jesus. You cannot be with Jesus talkers. You cannot be with Jesus enthusiasts. You cannot be with Jesus people who are talking faith and not be full of faith and, and not talk boldly. And every form of fear will surely leave you. Praise the Lord. So avoid fearful company and embrace faith talkers. You know, what you continuously hear affects your thinking, affects your feeling, and it also affects your perspective as a whole. So be careful on who you listen to. Be careful who you, are, who you hang around with. Be careful, you know, the messages you, you, you listen to. Be careful the books you read. Because they could affect your thinking. They could affect your feeling. And it, they, will, they, they can affect your perspective generally. Praise the Lord. You know, so avoid fearful company and embrace faith talkers. That's number six on how to overcome fear, praise the Lord. And number seven on how to overcome fear is we must cast it out. Fear must be cast out, praise God. We must cast it out, praise the Lord. You know, you don't, what you watch will, will remain. What you don't resist will insist. What you don't resist will insist. What you watch, you are permitted to stay. So we must cast out fear for it to flee from us, for us to overcome fear. Praise God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. What an interesting Bible passage we have there. 10, 5 says, Casting down imaginations, casting down fears, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Glory to Jesus. Say, so casting down, down imaginations, casting down fears. Our fears are imaginary. Fears are imaginary. They are not real. Say, so false evidence is appearing real. Someone, you know, define fear to be false evidence is appearing real. They are not real. They are imaginary. Most of the things we call fear, you know, they are not. Some of the things that cause us to fear are not anything that, in fact, those, those things that we fear are fearful of us if we realize who we are in Christ. But because we do not know who we are, we are afraid of little things. And that's why I say they are imaginary. And the Bible says, casting down imaginations. Casting down those imaginary things like fear. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We must cast it out. Cast down every fear. Hallelujah. You must cast it out. Cast down every fear. And also, remember where we read in Acts chapter 4 when Peter and John we are threatened by the, high, by the Jews, the high priest, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. They came back to their own company. What did they do? They went back to scriptures and they discovered Psalm number 2. Psalm number 2. And they prayed with Psalm 2. And let's look at Psalm 2 to see what that beautiful Psalm said. Psalm 2. Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 2. The Bible says... Say, so why do the heathens rage? Say, so why do the heathens rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Praise God. So we need to cast it down. Say, so why do the people rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. You know, he, he said, going down, he said, let us break their bands and so on and cast away their cords from us. Say, so he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. So, the Bible says, why do the hidden rage? And imagine a venting. The Bible calls it a venting. So, that fear is a venting. 
That fear is a vain thing. That fear that is that is intimidating you is a vain thing. The Bible says, "Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing?" So that thing that is raging against your business, putting fear in you, the Bible says, "Cast it down, cast it down." That is the way to go. Casting down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing them to, to subjection to obedience. They need to obey God. They need to obey the word of God. And God is dependent on you to bring them to obedience. Praise the Lord. So we must cast it out. We must cast it out. And we also saw David in 1 Samuel chapter 17 that when he was Goliath he threatened the people of Israel, David faced him face to face and he cast down the, 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 the supposed giant. He that, was, he that threatened the children of Israel became a dead man in a split second. Just by, by, by one smooth stone, you know, he, he, he fell down flat and died. That is the power of God. That is what God can do. You know, David had to cast down Goliath. So whatever Goliath that is standing your way, you need to cast it down today in the precious name of Jesus. So I trust God that if you'll be diligent to apply these principles in your business, every form of fear will flee from you. I trust God that if we apply these principles in your career, in your marriages, in any relationship, or in any, any department of life, that fear will flee from you. You begin to operate in love. You begin to see, make significant progress. Fear can paralyze you. Fear can you know, make you to become powerless. Fear undermines the, your power and blessing. Even if you are gifted, even if you are talented, even if you are equipped, if, even if you are a promising leader, fear can corrode your powers. It can undermine your powers and your blessings. So that is why it is important for us to overcome fear. Praise the Lord. Remember, we said how you can overcome fear is by be being born again, be born of God. Number two, through understanding of your makeup as a believer. Number three, you need to build your faith. Number four, you must be a bold talker. And number five, you said embrace the spirit of love. Number six, you said avoid fearful company and embrace faith talkers. And number seven, we said cast it out. Praise the Lord. So begin to cast out that fear right now. Begin to cast it out. And I see that fear fleeing from you. So resist the devil and he will flee from you. In the precious name of Jesus. I count it a great privilege coming your way this evening. And I trust God that you have been blessed by this message. You know, which you started about three weeks ago. I know that God has truly blessed you. And my prayer is that your business will go forward. In the precious name of Jesus. Just like Isaac. The Bible says that Isaac so did the Lord. And the Lord blessed him and favored him that he gained more and more. That he went forward, became great, and became extremely distinguished. I trust God to extremely distinguish you in your own business in the precious name of Jesus. Perhaps you want to start one business or the other and you have not started. And you are, you are fearful in the name of Jesus. I destroy every form of fear in you in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to begin. Receive grace to begin. Receive grace to begin in the precious name of Jesus. Are you already in business and you want to expand to other frontiers? I, I release the grace of God for expansion in the name of Jesus. Great ideas, great ideas, great helpers come, are coming your way in the precious name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. But just like you said, that you can, one, the first way for you to overcome fear, which is very fundamental, is that you must be born again. If you are not born again, I would like you to pray this prayer with me. Because you must believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's not about church. It's not about attending services. But it's all about you believing in the finished work of Calvary. Receiving Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior. And every form, of, every form of fear of internal damnation will flee from you. You become a child of God and you begin to walk in the light of his countenance. And the favor of God will become your portion. So, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for, for dying on the cross for me. 
and rising on the third day. I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you rose for my justification. Forgive my sins. Receive me as one of your own, and grant me a place in your eternal kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because it, it is done. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And I pray for you, praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, as many as have prayed this prayer, I declare them forgiven in the name of Jesus. And I declare that they become part and parcel of your kingdom in Jesus' precious name. Keep them, O God, till the day of your appearing. And bless them as only you can in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have prayed that prayer, know that you are born again. I want to encourage you to join the Bible Believing Church where you will be taught the Word of God. Also read the Word of God continually and daily and always pray. If you don't know where to start in the Word, begin with the New Testament. And the God of heaven will bless you mightily. Praise the Lord. And I pray again that this week, God will show you his marvelous favor in the precious name of Jesus. Whatever that is not working in your life will begin to work like never before in Jesus' precious name. I speak to that business again. Move forward in Jesus' name. Move forward in Jesus' name. Move forward in Jesus' name. And I pray that you will prosper, that your prosperity be evident to all in Jesus' precious name. And I pray that as we celebrate this post resurrection season, that the Bible says that Jesus appeared to many 40 days after resurrection with infallible proofs, that Jesus, by his Spirit, will appear to you through diverse infallible proofs that will cause you to be, to be gloriously decorated in this season in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joy. What a joy. Thank you for staying to this time. And I know that the God of heaven will bless you mightily. Till I come your way again, same time next week, remain ever beautified. God bless you. Hallelujah.